According to her phone bill last month, Kristen Carrillo received or sent 7,500 texts. At about 10 words per text, that's like typing the Gettysburg Address 277 times. And to prove it, this is that phone bill, all 104 pages for just one month. And Kristen is just part of the new normal. According to the cell phone industry, 110 billion texts are sent every month. How fast am I going? As fast as you feel comfortable. Yeah. First, like I did, Kristen drove the track with no distractions. Then she started reading messages while watching for brake lights. Things are going bust. Shopkeepers keep a gun under the counter. Punks are running wild in the street. See, I told you it was going to be a little bit more than I was reading. No, you're actually uh, proving something that we found out in the last time we did this test, which is sometimes people are quicker when they're reading the text. I think because they see the light in their peripheral vision and then they just, they respond instantly. I don't have to tell you, things are bad. Everybody knows things are bad. It's a depression. Everybody's out of work. That one was bad. <laughs> and then it was time to text. Yeah, your, your times are stretching out a bit. <laughs> about about sure. twi twice as long. I think my reaction time is slower because I'm not paying as atten much as attention. Like it's, you try and see it out your provisional vision, but it doesn't. Al it's not always there. Like that's what I'm noticing. Kristen actually did fairly well overall, but the texting took its toll on her reaction times. Car and driver's Aaron Robinson says most people are surprised by how much their attention wanders. But, uh, what they don't understand uh, or what they fail to perceive is that uh, they are actually delayed in their responses. Car and driver took their experiment one step further. They wanted to compare distracted driving with drunk driving. And of course, as journalists, it was important that we explore every aspect of the original test. But try explaining to your boss that you want to get drunk on the job. After seemingly endless negotiation between our broadcast, KCET management and our insurance company over getting behind the wheel while intoxicated, we finally got permission to drive this closed course while drunk, as long as we wore one of these. Car and driver's subjects downed screwdrivers in preparation for their drunk driving tests. So who are we to mess with any of the study's parameters? Cheers. We need to make one point very clear. You can turn off your wireless device and focus on driving anytime after you get behind the wheel. But once you're drunk, you're drunk. There's no going back until the alcohol is out of your system. And just as the dangers of driving drunk became front page material many years ago, now texting while driving is being acknowledged as a growing threat. Recent studies found texting drivers experience a 400% increase in the time their eyes are off the road. That makes them eight times more likely to be in a crash. Texting truck drivers are 23 times more likely to be in an accident. And depending on which report you believe, 30 to 50 percent of drivers admit texting. Findings like these have led President Obama to sign an executive order that bans federal employees from texting if they're behind the wheel of a government vehicle. Congress is considering a national ban, and even the wireless industry, which used to oppose such measures, now supports them, as do automakers like the Ford Motor Company. Back at Willow Springs, Kristen and I consumed about two-thirds of a bottle of vodka. We were ready for the breathalyzer and another crack at the track. 0 .20. .20 is more than twice the legal limit for intoxication in California. We're doing the same thing, right? Red light goes brake. Yeah, this is step on the brakes. Right. Stopping okay for somebody who's drunk. <laughs> like, I feel like I'm focusing much different. Like, I'm like really focusing on the road. Like, that's how I feel. That one was a bit, bit delayed. It was like another 18 feet longer. Really? Yeah. I can feel it, don't get me wrong. <laughs> well, I certainly hope so. You guys buy, polished off the better part of that whole bottle. Then it was my turn. Point one nine. Ready to go. Hope these cars are insured. Not bad, 0.8. That only took another 20 feet longer. Hey, I'm working on it. I'm working my way up. I can feel that my reaction time's a little delayed. Yeah, the brain, like I said, it's a processor. It can only process so many activities at once. 
And if you uh, are drinking as well, it's like turning the voltage down. So how did we do overall? The numbers show Kristen and I both took on average a little over half a second to react during normal driving and while driving and reading a text, even though that's still not a smart thing to do. When we tried to type text messages, both our reaction times suffered. Kristen needed nearly seven tenths of a second to respond. For me, it was almost a second. That also means it took us a lot longer to stop the car, an extra 15 to 20 feet on average for both of us. And in Southern California traffic, that means a collision. And once we were both more than twice the legal limit in California for intoxication, well, those numbers were a little surprising. Both of our reaction times got better. Mine dropped to three quarters of a second, Kristen's to under half a second. I think we've established that you are slower. Slower drunk or slower while texting? Slower while texting. A Not lot good. slower while texting. But don't let the numbers fool you. When we were intoxicated, our reaction times were inconsistent. And when we missed the brake lights, we probably would have caused a crash in the real world. Still, both of us were able to react and stop faster than someone who was texting and driving. And we had absolutely no business being behind the wheel. While you are texting, you are probably more of a danger than while you are drunk. And someday society will catch on, but they're still working on it. At least 14 states have already gotten the job done, banning driving while texting. In Utah, it's treated like drunk driving. A first-time offender can get three months in jail and up to a $750 fine. California has a texting ban, too. A first offense is a $20 fine. After that, it goes up to $50, still cheaper than most parking tickets in Los Angeles. I'm Vince Gonzalez for SoCal Connected.